We are plausibly live in the corner of 75 and 121 here in the great city of McKinney, Texas. Welcome back to episode three of Dynamics Chatter. Uh, we're gonna have a short pop-up episode here where we're gonna announce the birth of our newest uh, Dynamics 365 for Operations Consultant, class of 2042. We're gonna do a demo on inventory. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna understand how inventory works after this uh, functional um, uh, demo. And last but not least, my fab five, I'm gonna give you the five most important inventory setups and things you can't miss. Just like this pod, you can't miss. It's amazing, it's amazing that you're still listening to Dynamics Chat. Welcome back to episode three of Dynamics Chatter, and a big welcome to the newest friend of the pod, my newest niece, Emilina Smith. Uh, my co-host can't be here, but as you can see uh, from this next picture here, we're already teaching her the right things. Uncle Chad's teaching her that Jordan, Jordan Spieth is the only golfer that we root for. Data migration starts day one. Hosting profiles are the most important setup. I, I think she actually understands. I think she's, I think she's a genius. She's shaking her head yes at me. And most importantly, if you can only get one upgrade during the week, you always get it on Thursday going home. Don't waste it on a Monday morning to the client. Words to live by. Um, more words to live by is our functional power play that's coming up here. And let me set the table for that. This is the demo that I always do when I start out talking about costing of inventory. It sets the tone, it sets the foundation. And a lot of times people see this and their, their mind is blown. I think the number one um, thing I would say people don't understand about, about dynamics and, and, and they could have been using it for two years is how costing works with inventory and that's what i'm going to show you today so take a step back full disclosure uh, i'm not doing anything with the cost sheet in this i don't want i don't want to confuse everybody day one this is purely moving inventory in and moving it out and showing you how that gets costed uh, additionally i'm not using a standard cost method here i'm using a, a fifo method but this also applies to fifo weighted average lifo moving average concepts are still the same I'm going to put some in, I'm going to take some out, and we're going to, we're going to revalue. And you're going to see how costing uh, works on an individual item. The number one rule I want you to remember is that I get to choose the cost of the item going into inventory. So if I'm doing an account, if I'm doing a movement journal, I get to pick the cost. If I'm pulling it out, though, the system gets to pick the cost. And in the Fab Five, I'll show you the five steps that are the most important to this principle, to this concept. But... The other rule that we have on this spot is it's gotta be fun. So join me for the functional power play. Let's have some fun. And it's fun that you are still listening to Dynamics Chatter. Dynamics Chatter, functional power play. So we are looking at the functional power play. So we're going to start where every inventory conversation should start, and that is with the release product. So what I did here is I created a release product, and uh, basically it's clean. It's got no transactions on it. And the first thing that we're going to look at here is the item model group. I mean, this tells us that, that the item is stocked and that it's put in inventory. It tells us it's FIFO. And full disclaimer, people, please, please, please don't use allow physical negative inventory. Uh, it just leads to bad things, all right? I could do a whole episode on that, but if you can notice here, it doesn't have a single inventory transaction on it. So every inventory transaction has two transactions, a physical and a financial. So what I'm doing here is uh, we're gonna create a purchase order and you're gonna see uh, the receipt, which equals that physical transaction we're looking for. And then you're gonna see the invoice, which equals the financial transaction. Same thing is true though with the production order where I might, uh, finish it, uh, and then I might close it. One is the, uh, the physical raft journal, the closing is the financial transaction uh, that comes in with uh, uh, potential variances, okay? So I am I so I use that item, okay, I'm putting it into a specific site uh, and uh, warehouse, and uh, I'm doing a quantity of 10, and we're gonna do it at $10 uh, uh, per unit. So uh, I'm also gonna apply a location to this, but uh, basically I'm gonna go ahead and confirm the order, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do my first physical transaction. So we're gonna do, and as I go, we're gonna kind of track this. We're gonna kind of look at uh, how the value of inventory changes. 
um, and how we have this thing called a running average versus what I call um, the FIFO or the weighted average, uh, depending on what method you're using. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the receipt here. I'm gonna do the receipt at uh, 9.15, I believe. Yep, so, so the first transaction occurs at 9.15, and we're gonna receive all 10 goods at $10, which is $10 per unit. Okay, so as I go and as we do this, uh, we're, we're really just looking at a pretty simple receipt and invoice transaction here, but uh, throughout this, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and um, run the inventory value report as well, uh, which you'll see is a, is a really important uh, uh, report in Dynamics. But here what I'm doing is I'm doing a movement drill. We're actually going to take inventory out, okay? So this gets back to the most important rule uh, that we have with inventory and when we're using some sort of actual costing method. When inventory goes in, I get to choose the cost, okay? When inventory goes out, okay, the system picks the cost. So here, in this case, um, you'll notice I'm gonna, uh, I moved 10 in at $10, okay? I'm now going to move um, uh, one unit out. So you see how my cost price, I can't edit it, okay? The reason I can't edit it is because the system is going to use its cost. I don't get to choose the cost. And the great thing about a movement journal is I get to pick the account. So I'm going to uh, basically write this off to uh, maintenance and, and supply. We're going to consume this. So um, I'm going to go ahead and post this. And we posted this at a 920 date. So 915, we got 10 in. 920, we took one out. Okay. So now we're going to go look at the inventory value report. Now, what I always tell people with this is I say, hey, set up two of these. Set up one that gives you a summary look, which is basically one line per item. All right. I've got this, should I, you know, at 920, I should now have nine units uh, times $10, which should be $90. Okay. The other one I have you set up is I have you set up a detailed one. So I could see um, all the ins and outs of the transaction. So I can see the 10 that went in, I can see the one that came out. It's good to have both and it's good to use both when we reconcile. So as you can see, my uh, running average is now $10 per unit. My theoretical FIFO is $10 per unit. So we're still in line, we're still looking pretty good. But you gotta remember, we're gonna have multiple ins and multiple outs and we're gonna have stuff coming in at different prices because uh, I could be purchasing from one vendor at a certain price and purchasing from another vendor at a certain price, okay? Um, so on this now, we're going to go and invoice. I'm going to invoice uh, here uh, at 10.5, okay? So again, there, I received the goods on 9.20, but I didn't get the invoice until 10.5, all right? But if you notice here, what I'm doing now is I'm actually invoicing this at $15 per unit, okay? There's a good chance that this happens from time to time. Maybe there's tax. Maybe uh, we didn't have the right pricing in our system. Uh, and now those goods came in at a higher price. So now I'm going to go back to the inventory value report. And let's take a look at what the status of our inventory is. Okay, and now the key thing here is what, what the two-day is, okay? Uh, because my inventory is going to have one price on 9.30. It's going to have a different price on 10.5. So as you can see here, um, at my 10.31 day here, um, I now have a uh, different rate, okay? So now my running average and my theoretical FIFO are all of a sudden now different, okay? I hope you see that. That's the most important part that I want you to see. Um, so you can see here at 9.30, okay? I've got $10 per unit, okay? But at 1031, okay, I actually have $15.56 uh, per unit in my running average, okay? But my, but, but we really want our theoretical FIFO to be 15, okay? So do you see that slight difference? There's gonna be a difference there. Uh, so now if we go back, I'm gonna do another movement journal and we're gonna pull some more out. So we're gonna pull four more units out. Uh, I, through this movement journal, and we're going to uh, uh, basically uh, take away f uh, uh, four more units from our 10, okay, or excuse me, from the nine we currently have, okay? And you're gonna see now how that, that, that the $15 uh, price impact actually gets picked up, and uh, we're now actually uh, valuing uh, 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 even um, higher than, than, what, than what, we, what we should be uh, at our FIFO average, okay? Again, it goes back to having this idea of a running average, okay, versus um, what we want our FIFO average, and that's what we're going to get back to when we revalue here in a second. Okay. So the other thing is, is, is you got to be careful when you look at the invent trans, the transactions on the item, okay, um, because uh, a lot of times it'll give you a cost amount, okay. You have to look at the physical cost, you have to look at the financial cost, there's also an adjustment cost, okay. So... When you go look at the inventory transactions, I would say that's pretty good for the physical, but if you really want to see the value, go to the inventory value report. It, it, it will help you a lot better. It's not that you can't get there, it's just a lot easier. So now I'm going to take uh, uh, four more units out at 1020. So 
A month later, we're gonna consume four more units, okay? And again, the system picks the cost. We don't get to pick the cost. That's not editable, okay? We're gonna go ahead and post this, okay? And let's look at what, what value those came out at because they came out at our new running average, okay? Um, so now you can see that it, those items, those four came out at 15.56, okay? So now, instead of having you know, five units at 75, we actually are saying the five units in inventory are $77.78. That's, that's, that's our running average number, but, but we wanna be able to get back to our FIFO number. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and look at this um, uh, in a, yeah, you're gonna look at the detail. You're gonna see all the ins and outs, okay? You can see the, uh, you can see the, uh, the 10 we put in, the one that came out. You can see the uh, $50 uh, addition from our invoice, and you can see the four that came out of inventory. That's why it's really good to have kind of a summary report as well as having a um, uh, this detail report. Okay, the only thing you have to worry about is just that it'll time out. So what I always say is have a summary report that runs up to the first of the month and then have a detail report for the current month. Um, so now what we're doing is we're recalculating our inventory. We're going to close our inventory, okay? And, and basically I'm walking through that process. But the key thing I want you to see here is when we run that recalc process, okay, this is what gets us back to what, I, what we call FIFO or back to weighted average or back to LIFO, whatever, whatever method you're using. And as you can see here, it created that $2.22 uh, $2 adjustment that we were looking for, okay? That is what gets our running average, okay? And that's what gets us back to that theoretical FIFO. So that if we were to go uh, out uh, in, in November and we were to pull five more out of inventory, okay? It would pull out the $15 uh, 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 FIFO rate which is also be the running average, okay? Instead of pulling it out at the 1556, okay? Super important, I hope you can see that and you can see here in the inventory value report that we've gotten back to, to where we wanna be. Okay, so um, I'm gonna run this one more time and we'll take a look at it one more time here. And as you can see, um, in, in summary, I've got five units now, 15 hours, but that did not happen, okay, until we recalculated and we closed the period. Now, it's also important to realize that um, had, I, had I had a, a five more units coming at $20, it would have taken the FIFO. Now, if I was running weighted average, it would have taken the weighted average of those items. Had I run LIFO, it would have taken that at $20 instead of 15. Super important, as I look at the transactions now, you can see now that I have a, a physical cost, I have a, 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 an actual cost, but then I have an adjustment cost, okay? And then you can see the amount settled. So again, these can be a little misleading, so you have to understand where you're at in the process, because at the end of the day, the important thing to remember and, and, and what, what people fail to understand is that uh, this this piece of inventory cost me ten dollars. It also cost me fifteen dollars. It just depends on what date. Because at nine thirty it cost ten bucks, but at uh, at, at ten thirty one it cost fifteen. And the good part is the recalc and the revalue got my moving average and got me back to FIFO, and it got me right back to where I needed to be. So I hope you enjoyed that functional uh, uh, power play. I hope you understand a little bit more about how inventory works. Super important to understand this concept, and uh, and hopefully. This was a light bulb moment, just like it was for me when I first got this demo. Don't go anywhere. Next up, Chad brings us this week's Fab Five. Welcome back to Dynamics Chatter Fab Five segment. We're going to talk about the five most important setups on an item for inventory costing. Number one. And if somebody tells you this is not number one, punch them right in the nose because they don't know what they're talking about. Item model groups. I mean, this is a setup where we just dictate whether or not something even goes into inventory. So I would say it's the most important. I could do a whole show on what all these boxes mean, and I probably will at some point. Super important to understand what, what each one of these are. There, there's not important setups in Dynamics. This is an important one. You need to know what every one of these setups says. And please, 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 just my PSA, public service announcement, Please don't use physical negative inventory. It just, it'll put you in a bad place. Learn that the hard way. Super important item model groups. Number two and number five on my list are um, item groups and the posting profiles. These are super important because these dictate how something posts into Dynamics um, and how the sub ledger and the ledger work together. It dictates, hey, if I um, ship something, what cost to get sold account it hits. It dictates if uh, if I uh, invoice something, what, what revenue account I hit. And it also dictates the in and out of inventory. There's a right way to do this, and there's a wrong way to do this. There are certain setups that need to be inventory, and there are certain nodes that don't need to be inventory. 
I'll probably put that out uh, in a later blog episode and we'll, we'll walk through that. Last but not least, uh, number uh, three and four on my list. Uh, so I went one, two, five, and now I'm going three and four, storage and tracking dimensions. These dictate at what level um, my FIFO, my LIFO, my weighted average, uh, at what level the, um, the uh, revalue occurs at. So what does that mean? Let me give you an example. Let's say your site is the United States. That's your site. Um, and let's say that you have a warehouse in Manhattan and you have a warehouse in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. If I have the physical checked, like you can see here, I will track this widget uh, to the physical level of site and warehouse. Okay. Here's the thing, people forget the financial check boxes. So what happens is, is when they go to recalculate LIFO, it doesn't care whether or not you have 10 in uh, Manhattan and five in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. It doesn't FIFO those based on the warehouse they're in. It FIFOs 15 total. So if I pull out five out of here, but I had my first five came in in Manhattan, it's gonna take the cost of the first five. And I gotta believe, gotta believe that the cost of the item that goes in uh, in the uh, in, in Manhattan, New York, okay, is got to be a little bit higher than Lancaster, Pennsylvania. So super important that you check the right level that you want to revalue or the, or the level you want to FIFO at. It's, I can't tell you how important that is and how people miss that. And the problem is, is if you post something to that item, you now can't change it. Okay. What you can change though is send us an email. You can send us an email at dynamicschatter at gmail.com. Uh, thank you so much for all the notes and all the name your host contest submissions. Uh, we'll be doing that here uh, at the end of October. Wanted to let AJ have his have his um, have his firstborn first, so that uh, she would actually know his name before we before we changed it permanently. Thanks to the Dynamics Podcast uh, channel, guys. Uh, they have way better hair than us. They also have a better show than us, but they have way better. We're totally jealous of their of their hair because we're AJ and I think we're both we're both losing it up here. So. Big thanks to them for letting us join their channel. We're trying to channel some love your way, channel some love our way. Please give us a contact and thank you so much. You know, thank you so much for uh, your support. Uh, over 400 subscribers now to the channel, and you're listening to amazingly still listening to maybe listening to Dennis Chat.